Hello and welcome to another DSP video. In this video, we'll solve for the inverse discrete time Fourier transform of an impulse train. So specifically, we're looking at a signal, P of n, that has the Fourier transform shown here. So it's a series of impulses, and there are n impulses between 0 and 2 pi, and the spacing is 2 pi over n. And remember, this is a DTFT, so it is periodic with period 2 pi, so um, it repeats outside the interval shown. So as I said, the goal of this video is to find and sketch P of n. So here's the diagram uh, showing p of e to the j omega again. It's just copied from the previous slide. And remember, this is periodic with period 2 pi. We can represent p of e to the j omega via this analytical formula. It's simply an infinite summation of scaled and shifted impulses. The area of each of these impulses is 2 pi over n, so that can pull out of the summation. And then the impulses are just located at multiples of 2 pi over n. So we have one at 0, we have one at 2 pi over n, 4 pi over n, etc. And this gets all of those uh, scaled and shifted impulses. So we can solve for p of n, the, which is the inverse transform, just by taking the inverse transform integral. Um, and that integral is defined as 1 over 2 pi times the integral p of e to the j omega times e to the j omega n d omega. So we're integrating with respect to the radian frequency variable. And we can integrate over any interval of length 2 pi because this is periodic with period 2 pi. So we can pick an interval here, say between here and here, that's of length 2 pi. So the width here is 2 pi, right? So we could write this equation as p of n is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral. And let's just say we're integrating from minus pi over n uh, to 2 pi minus pi over n. And then we're integrating p of e to the j omega, which is 2 pi over n, the sum k equal minus infinity to plus infinity, delta of omega minus 2 pi over n k, e to the j omega n d omega. So this is what we get out of um, this overall integral. So now we just have to compute this integral. And note, this we are integrating over a 2 pi interval here, right? It spans from minus pi over n to um, pi over n just to the left of 2 pi. So we're implementing this integral correctly. We can actually make one further change here, though, because we notice if we're integrating over this interval here, there aren't an infinite number of impulses. There are only a finite number of impulses. The impulses that we have to worry about are the ones between 0 and uh, 2 pi. So we can actually change the limits on this integral, um, and now the limits here could go from 0, um, which is the first, um, the first impulse included, up to here, right, which is the n minus first um, impulse in this summation. So we can actually change the limits to go from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, so we've reduced our problem to solving this equation, and um, we can immediately see some simplifications are possible. We can pull out the 2 pi over n and the 2 pi's cancel, and that leaves us with 1 over n. And then the next thing we can do is reverse the order of the integral and the summation. So now we're going to have the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of the integral between minus pi over n and 2 pi minus pi over n of delta of omega minus 2 pi over n k e to the j omega n d omega. So now we're left with an integral involving a delta function. So that is just going to pick out, uh, it's a delta function times another function. So, um, 
and the delta is definitely included within these limits. So all that's going to do is pick out the value of this function at the location of the delta. The delta is at 2 pi over nk, omega equal 2 pi over nk. So what we're left with is 1 over n, the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of e to the j, and now we're going to substitute in 2 pi over nk times n. All right, because this is the value of omega at the location of the delta function. So this is a geometric series that we can just use our formula for the partial sum of a geometric series to solve this. So what we're going to be left with is the 1 over n stays there, and then we get um, this evaluated at k equals 0. This evaluated at k equals 0 is just 1. So, and then we subtract off this evaluated at n minus 1 plus 1, right, at the upper limit plus 1. So what we'll be left with is e to the j 2 pi over n, n times n, right? Um, because I'm substituting in k is equal to n minus 1 plus 1, or k equal n. So I have that for my numerator, and then in the denominator I have 1 minus e to the j 2 pi over n times n, right? So this is just um, this expression um, raised to the first power. Okay, so we've got this. Um, now we can pretty easily see that the n's cancel, and so I'll be left with this overall expression. 1 minus e to the j 2 pi little n over 1 minus e to the j 2 pi over big n times little n. And so this is a complex exponential raised to um, at 2 pi n, right? So for all values of little n as an integer, right? So this is just e to the j 2 pi and multiples of that. So the numerator, the numerator is always equal to zero. The denominator we have to look at here. So we're looking at the denominator. Now, this is going to be non-zero except when um, n is a multiple of big N. Little n is a multiple of big N. So um, so it's 0 when n is equal to a multiple of plus and minus n, an integer multiple of plus and minus n, right? So at plus and minus n, plus and minus 2n, 3n, etc. Okay, so we're going to have to do something here to evaluate what this is equal to um, when I end up with this condition of 0 over 0. So we have to use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate what this expression is equal to uh, when we have um, the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. And so to do that, right, we look at um, taking the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. So we have, for the top, we have, we're looking at d by dn of 1 over n times 1 minus e to the j 2 pi n over d by dn of uh, 1 minus e to the j 2 pi over big N times little n. And then we're going to evaluate that at one of these indeterminate points, which in this case one of them is 0, at little n equals 0. So we do this, we take the derivative here, Okay, the first term goes away because it doesn't depend on little n. The second term, we can easily calculate that derivative. That derivative will be minus um, j 2 pi, and then e to the j 2 pi n. And the derivative down at the bottom, this first term, the derivative is 0. The second term, I'm going to end up with minus j 2 pi over n, uh, e to the j 2 pi over n times n, and I 
accidentally left off a 1 over n in the numerator. So that came from here. And so if I just reduce all of this, and I'm evaluating this, by the way, at n equals 0. So the, the j2 pi's, the minus j2 pi's, and the 1 over n's all cancel out. So that term cancels that, that. And then I'm just evaluating this at n equals 0, and so I'm left with this is equal to 1, because e to the j 2 pi 0 is 1, and e to the j 2 pi over n 0 is also 1. Um, so we can summarize this as follows. p of n is going to be equal to 1 when n is equal to 0 plus and minus big N plus and minus 2n plus and minus 3n, etc., and 0 otherwise. So p of n is, is only equal to 1 at multiples, integer multiples of capital N. So we can, our goal, remember, was to sketch this. Um, and so our sketch would be that this would be equal to 1 at 0. And then let's say n is here, 1 at n. one at two n minus n, etc. And this repeats. So this is an infinite train of impulses with where I get um, a discrete impulse um, at uh, one at zero at n at two n, etc. So this is the transform pair that we derived, right? We, what we showed was if we start with an impulse train in the frequency domain where the spacing is 2 pi over n, what we get back at, as the inverse transform is an impulse train in the time domain where the spacing is equal to n. Um, this is similar to the result we might have expected based on our knowledge of continuous time impulse trains. And so in continuous time, if we have an impulse train in the time domain, we end up with an impulse train in the frequency domain. Um, we use continuous time impulse trains for interpreting time domain sampling, and we're going to use this discrete time impulse train here um, to interpret uh, sampling in the frequency domain, or that leads us to the uh, discrete Fourier transform, which is implemented by the algorithm known as the fast Fourier transform. So look for another video that discusses this frequency uh, domain sampling problem uh, to get us to the DFT um, using this transform pair. Thanks for watching.